Hey there, uh, Alex from the database team here, just uh, giving you a quick overview of how to use Postgres AI Jobot uh, for testing your queries. So uh, when you get to the Postgres AI console, you're gonna see this sign-in page. Uh, you wanna select sign-in with Google. Don't click sign-in with GitLab. You need sign-in with Google because we use that to sync with our uh, organization. So. If you sign in with Google, you should be signed in automatically. Now, uh, once you're in, you should see organizations. In this case, you'll get GitLab. Uh, now, on the side, when you first join, I have a bunch of other stuff on here, but you should have under SQL optimization, Ask Joe. When you go in there, you'll see three different projects. So the main project you'll be using probably is GitLab Production Tunnel PG12. That's our main GitLab database. That said, if you have CI queries uh, that run against the CI database, you'll need to select GitLab Production CI for those queries instead. And if you're using the Container Registry project, uh, then we have yet another project for you. So I'm going to go into the main project here. You can see it spit out a list of helpful things that we can use to make plans, uh, explain plans. Typically, your best bet is to use explain. So not only does that analyze the query, it also executes it with analyze buffers. So say you wanted to test a query that you were running in, in a merge request, you could say explain, select, um, sorry. Uh, Star from users where name. So, uh, what it's going to do is it's going to sit here and think. Mm -hmm. Actually, what it's doing right now is it's making a new session. So, that means it's uh, generating a new clone for you on our database lab server. That takes about 20 seconds. So, maybe I should pause. Is the recording all right so that obviously failed because i forgot to put the quotes but if i put quotes around this it's still mad because i used double quotes instead of single quotes there we go so that takes 12.5 milliseconds not bad so anyway that's how you do it uh, you can also do things like exec, so uh, user set uh, so. I can run an exec and it'll go through and do that. So now if I try to run this command again, you'll see the actual rows it returned was zero. Whereas this time the actual the first time the actual rows was one. That's because it updated my name. So now if I go back and say Alex Ives one instead. Uh, oops. That was not what I meant to do. Uh, there we go. So now if I rerun that select with one, you'll see it's got one. Uh, now, say you wanted to reset, you could do that. And what this will do is it'll reset the data back to its state. This also takes about 30 seconds, so I'm going to pause again. The reset is done, and I already went ahead and reran this query. And you'll see I reran it with my original name and it's, uh, it's reset. And so you can see I've got the rows one again. So anyway, reset is pretty powerful. You can do a bunch of stuff, reset it and start over. Um, but exec is also really powerful. And more than just altering data, you can add new rows, you can add indexes, you can modify indexes, you can try validating foreign keys, uh, anything 
anything you could do in your database, you can exec, and then you can run queries afterwards to analyze those results. So anyway, uh, thank you for listening through my rambles, and uh, thank you for doing your part to keep GitLab's queries good and healthy and happy. And if you have any questions, please reach out to anyone on our team in the G database Slack channel. Thanks.